I thought it would be quite interesting to do a teardown on one of my own homemade lamps. Now, here's a in little interesting thing. Watch what happens when I put the uh, base of the lamp across this two pence piece. Did you see that brief flash that came from the LEDs? That's uh, why you have to use a discharge resistor across the capacitor, because otherwise when you touch those pins or the touch the base of the lamp, after it's been, un been unplugged you get a bit of a tingle. And this, I really don't know when I built these lamps, um, because I can recall that the first decorative LED lamp came out at the time. And I immediately bought one that was really expensive and it wasn't very bright, but um, I wanted to see what the circuitry was inside, how they derived an LED supply from the mains. And they'd filled it with resin to stop people uh, coughing it, presumably, and uh, just to protect it from water, maybe. And I uh, dug all the resin out, painstakingly heated it up with a hot air gun and uh, used a screwdriver to gradually unearth the circuit and reverse engineered it. And it was the first time I'd come across the capacitive droppers. And I promptly designed my own LED lamps just for decorative use around the house because I could then use just whatever LEDs I had or wanted to try. And over the years I've used the same things. I've actually uh, made so many of these front circuit boards that I uh, occasionally just replace the board with a different colour or a different style of LED just depending on what I want. But um, I use these lights in uh, globe fixtures like this. Now, this is a common fixture in the UK designed for use in wet areas like bathrooms, but it just so happens that it's really superb. If you put it down on a uh, tabletop or a bench or a shelf and you drill a hole underneath to give access to the cable and you bring a cable in with proper strain relief, I'd guess, underneath because uh, you don't want the cable yanked out. Uh, and then you actually screw this onto the, the shelf, then you can just basically use it as a decorative light fitting, fitting with an LED lamp in it. And, uh, well, to give you an idea of what that would look like, here's one I've got glowing at the moment. Um, and I'll shield it from the light, but you see it just basically creates a soft, diffused globe of light. And these globes are available uh, quite cheaply and in a wide range of sizes. Uh, I'll show you the, oh, the size. They're also made of glass, but you get, also get plastic ones. So um, this one here is the one that has been lit in my hall for possibly continually 24-7 for at least a decade. It's been on for so long. And because LED lamps weren't so readily available, I was building my own um, using these compact fluorescent lamp bases because the compact fluorescent lamps were readily available. So uh, I'm wondering, uh, I think this was the first one. I'm not, I think this might be a second generation, not 100% sure. I designed it to snap in the same way the two halves snap together. It's the same circuit board, but it's missing, yes, it's missing some components because I discovered this one's got blue LEDs in it, and I discovered with one of them that because the early blue LEDs were not reliable, well, even current LEDs aren't that reliable, um, I discovered one day I came home and the light fitting was off, and uh, I thought, oh, wonder what's happened there, is there a power cut or something like that? And it turned out that one of the LEDs had gone open circuit. And at the time, to allow for the possibility of it going open circuit with a, a low value of capacitor, because the high voltage capacitors were a wee bit hard to get at that time, I bridged it with Zener diodes, two Zener diodes in series. I think they're rated about 47 volts each, and it's a 100 volt, yeah, 100 volt capacitor, electrolytic, and two 47 volt Zeners in series. But in reality, what actually happened was uh, the Zeners shunted the current, which was about, oh, at that it would be about 20, just under 20 milliamps, uh, at the best part of 100 volts, so they actually got pretty hot. What, what is that? Um, each zener would be dropping about 47 volts, so the power dissipated would be uh, 47 volts times 0 0.02 equals... Yeah, each one was dissipating the best part of a watt, so the circuit board went a bit hot looking in the vicinity and uh, that's the point I decided, you know what, I'll even just get rid of the capacitor and, uh, as in the case of this one so it, it means it's just a little bit, to the camera it looks flicker, flickery but in reality to the human eye, it's, the LEDs are off for, certainly in our 240 volt supply, are off for such a short length of time that uh, they, you know, you don't really get a, a strong visual flicker. And to fit it all in, uh, I can see here, looking at this, I found a 330 nanofarad capacitor, I'll doodle this out in fact, uh, that fitted inside the base. So the capacitor's mounted underneath, or actually it's mounted on top of the circuit board with the wires going down the side. And then that 
put goes into the bayonet cap base. And I made a few of these uh, with uh, these look discoloured because it, these are um, blue LEDs, I think, with the tips ground off because the the top the flat top LEDs weren't available uh, in blue and other colours at that time. And I just basically ground the tips off and uh, put a drop of resin in. I, I actually dipped the LEDs in resin just to put a new lens in the front to make them wider viewing angle. I did that a lot uh, in that era because um, the the straw hat LEDs were just not readily available at that time. And when I was making TV props and film props, the, I needed LEDs that looked sharp and visual but weren't too glaring uh, with the sort of 5mm lens effect where it would actually be a very directional source of light. So I'll do the schematic for these down. I'm just going to grab a notepad. It pretty much turned out to be the textbook LED schematic um, of, well, live or neutral, it doesn't really matter because it's bayonet cap, it can go around either way. With the capacitor, 330 nanofarad, 400 volt, which I got from Rapid Electronics at the time. A bridge rectifier, standard bridge rectifier, not discrete diodes, just a, a generic bridge rectifier. Um, and then the series resistor, which in this case I used quite a high value. I used 1K and I used a 1 watt one. Um, I'm not 100%, I think I was just playing safe at that time. And if we draw this exactly um, as I'd done it then, it had the capacitor, um, then it had the two Zener diodes in series to shunt the voltage down if it ever went open circuit and as it happened it did go open circuit and that shows that some of these uh, lamps you get these days that just use the low value voltage value capacitor that capacitor could potentially pop in those uh, if the lamps do go open circuit but then after that it was just tons of LEDs loads of LEDs as many I'm saying as many as I could fit on but uh, I've obviously done them pretty patterns in these are they all the same? no that, that's different uh, it's done in circles I had lots of fun uh, designing these circuit boards at the time. So laterally, I just basically got rid of all these components. Um, they were 47 volt uh, Zeners. He said, writing it next to them after he scrubbed them out. What was the capacitor I used? It was 100 volt. Um, 22 microfarad. So yeah. So it evolved, it went on from that. I decided to uh, make a circuit board that would potentially, I think, allow more LEDs to be fitted in. And that's what this is here. This globe um, has a dedicated circuit board. Again, it's not got the smoothing, but uh, though that's visible, that shimmer is visible to the camera, it's not visible to the naked eye. And in here, instead of using a lamp, Basing, I removed that completely and just played, made a circuit board which has uh, how many LEDs has it got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 24 LEDs. And in this one, it does actually have the discharge resistor because I'd learned at that point you can get a zap off the pins, and that's what that little resistor is obviously needed for. And uh, obviously this one plugs in with a plug, so you could actually get a tingle off the pins of the plug when you unplugged it. But um, the 330 nanofarad with about 24, about 50 volts worth of LEDs actually passes about 22 milliamps. So if anything, I could have gone a wee bit lower, but having said that, the next step down at that time was 220 nanofarad. Uh, the 270 nanofarad weren't a standard value at that time. In this case, I used a one meg ohm uh, discharge resistor and the series resistor was just an ordinary quarter watt 470 ohm. Now let's see what's that going to be dissipating then? The, let's get a meter and see what's actually being dropped across that um, resistor. Another of these Amical meters. I'd like to say I'm not uh, sponsored by Amical, I just quite like these meters and because I'm traveling I, rather than go to the expense of having extra sort of luggage in the cargo. I just thought I, I need another meter over at the other place anyway, so I'll just buy another of these. So I'm going to be measuring volts AC, 
still get the protective film on. I should remove the protective film off that, shouldn't I? Because it looks tacky when you leave the protective film on. And I'll measure the voltage across that resistor, which is a 470 ohm resistor. So it's about 10.3 volts. So that makes the current through the circuit. That's a 470 ohm resistor, 10.3 volts, I equals V over R, so that's 10.3 divided by 470 ohms equals 21.9 milliamps. So let's say 22 milliamps through the circuit. So what's the dissipation then? Uh, that's the current times the voltage, which was 10.3, did I say? Um, means the resistor's actually dissipating 2.225 watts. So it's within its rating, but to be honest, I should have actually used a, a couple of resistors there, and there's plenty of room for them, so I could have used two in series, or, or indeed just used a lower value resistor, like 220 ohm. But, but anyway, I was experimenting at that time. It was just prototypes, but... Um, yeah, but this one here has just been lit for an unknown period of time, the red one. It's, it's just, you know, the, the room is basked in a red glow at night for, well, if it's been lit like that for, yeah, I'd say at least a decade now. It's just really, it's been an incredibly reliable lamp. It's been very good. But uh, yeah, the fun of making your own lamps when the other ones just weren't available yet. 